honored guests. Please welcome the Immortal Lion Dance Troupe while we welcome you into the main ballroom to find your seat.
Esteemed guests, please find your seats and silence your cell phones. Our program will begin shortly. Honored guests, welcome to the 2023 Asian Pacific Alumni Association Scholarship and Awards Gala. Please welcome to the stage tonight's MC, Mitchell Liu. Good evening. I, I love the energy in this room, but we got to find our seats so we can get started. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Talk about a hard act to follow. Let's hear it for the spectacular, immortal Lion Dance Troupe. A special thank you to Patricia and Harry Marr for generously sponsoring the troupe's performance. On behalf of the Asian Pacific Alumni Association, welcome to the 2023 USC APAA scholarship and awards gala. Now, if you were expecting David Ono or Frank Buckley, I'm sorry that you're disappointed. They're much better spoken than I am, but they're not as young and handsome. <laughs> so if you've been to one of our events before, welcome back. But if this is your first time, we're honored that you would spend a Saturday night with us I want everybody to relax, just take it all in, and do not check your phones. There, there will be a portion later on where I will ask you to check your phone, but I promise you'll all be glad that you came. The APA has been around for over 40 years, and we are a family within the Trojan family. Part of our mission is to build academic excellence among USC's Asian Pacific students, but also to provide meaningful programs for alumni. We're a large worldwide network that reconnects old friends, is a place to make new friends, where leaders emerge, and everyone has fun. Tonight, we come together to recognize four outstanding alumni and 79 accomplished student scholars, and also to raise funds to continue our mission. To get us started, Pastor Rocky Sito of Evergreen Baptist Church of San Gabriel Valley and a fellow Trojan will lead us in a blessing. Fight on, fight on. Isn't it great to be with the family, the Trojan family? Let me, uh, let's bless the uh, meal tonight. Will you pray with me right now? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for first and foremost, Christ, the savior of the world. Thank you for the great opportunity you have given all of us to be sitting here tonight. Thank you for this marvelous event that we get to come and support and invest into the future. Lord, will you bless the fellowship around the table, the conversations. Thank you for that we get to eat at such a wonderful place tonight. And God, I pray that you would bless the relationships at the table. I pray that we would leave closer together than we once came. So thank you, Father. Thank you for all the various elements that come tonight. And I pray specific, specifically particularly for the young students, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them uniquely through this event tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Sito. If you're wondering, that is the Rocky Sito. 
He was on Pete Carroll's national championship coaching staff. And then he went on to the Seattle Seahawks. It's now my privilege to introduce APA's dedicated executive director, the heart of our organization, my friend, Grace Sheba. Good evening, everyone. We are thrilled to see so many of you here with us tonight, and we thank you. First, I would like to thank Mitchell. It really means a lot to us that you are serving as our MC. And for those of you who may not be aware, he's, he's the former president of the APAA. So welcome back, Mitchell. Through his leadership and service, he has played a vital role in making our alumni organization what it is today. So we have many things to thank him for. The USC Asian Pacific Alumni Association has long been a cherished part of my life. Looking back, I marvel at how far we've come since the early days, and I am proud of how much our organization has grown. Today, when I reflect on everything that APA has accomplished, I feel very privileged to serve this amazing organization and work closely with my fellow Asian Pacific children. The invaluable contributions that the Asian Pacific Trojan family has made and continues to make to both USC and our community are exemplified by our four honorees this evening, as well as our 79 APAA scholars. They, along with all of you, embody the values of our organization was built on. I am truly humbled to see the outpouring of support from so many members and friends of the Trojan family here this evening with us. The rich legacy of APAA's founding members will continue to grow as new leaders emerge to guide us into the future. At this time, I would like to take a moment to remember a founding member and former president of the APAA and proud children, Kenneth Kasamatsu, who we lost last fall. I believe he was the longest serving president and loved meeting and giving advice to students and alumni. He loved our homecoming events and our tailgates and attended with his family annually. And of course, he was proud of our galas. We've come a long way. Ken was able to memorialize his family name by establishing his name's APA scholarship before his passing. He was a mentor and wonderful friend whose legacy will never be forgotten. Now I would like to recognize some special guests from the university who are joining us tonight. I would first like to acknowledge two USC trustees in attendance. Please stand and be recognized. Ms. Jamie Lee and Ms. Rod Nakamoto. And I'm proud to say that they're both former presidents of the APAA. I would also like to recognize the Dean of the USC School of Dramatic Arts, Emily Roxworthy. And from the USC Alumni Association, please welcome the President of the Board of Governors, Nadine Watt. and my wonderful boss, Patrick Auerbach. <laughs> and lastly, our amazing president of the APAA, Ms. Ada Ye. Thank you for your continued support of APAA and for sharing this evening with us. I also want to thank the members of the APA Board of Directors for giving their time, service, and resources to support the Asian Pacific Trojan family. Please stand so we may recognize you. All board members, please stand. And now, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the, this year's gala committee chair. He serves on the APA Board of Directors and has worked tirelessly with the committee and our staff to make tonight's event so special. Please give a warm welcome to Tim Wong. Wow, thank you so much, Grace. And hello, fellow Trojans, family, and friends. We are thrilled to celebrate the 41st anniversary of APAA. And I'd like to congratulate the honorees 
and all of the APA scholars whom we are highlighting tonight. This celebration is a culmination of many months of hard work by our wonderful gala committee, APA's devoted board of directors, and we have an awesome APA staff. So let me first thank my incredible vice chair, Felita Wong Shen, who gave so generously of her time, energy, and expertise, our outstanding board president, Ada Ye, and of course, Grace Sheba, Carol Shimazaki, and Angela Tang of APAA. None of this would be possible without your leadership, guidance, and hard work. So please join me in a round of applause for their dedicated efforts on behalf of APAA. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to all of the members of this year's gala committee whom I've had the pleasure of working with for so long. And I'd also like to thank everyone for attending tonight and for your support. So give yourselves a hand, thank you. And now, as he joins us on stage to deliver the university welcome, I'd like to acknowledge USC's Associate Senior Vice President for Alumni Relationships, Patrick Auerbach, for his leadership and support. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Tim. Good evening, everyone. You're going to hear a lot of familiar stuff because I think a lot of things I said have just been said, but I'm going to say it again because this is so well deserved. So once again, uh, it is my profound honor to stand before you and deliver the university welcome and thank you on behalf of more than 468,000 worldwide members of the USC Alumni Association. For, yeah, how about that? 468,000. We're going to be adding about 13 or 14,000 new members in a few weeks as well. And did you know that for more than 99 years, yes, for more than 99 years, the USC Alumni Association has brought the Trojan family together to strengthen our ties to one another and to our beloved university. And we could not do the work we do each and every day without the variety of constituencies and communities which comprise our Trojan family, notably the Asian Pacific Alumni Association. Now, even though APAA was founded in 1982, about six decades after the Alumni Association, there has actually been a profound API presence in the Trojan family for much longer, and it is a point of pride for all of us to see how this community has flourished over the decades, thanks to the efforts of everybody in this room. I'd like to start off by once again thanking the extraordinary efforts of our Executive Director, Grace Sheba, who continues... Thank you. She continues to proudly lead the APAA and serve as a key ambassador for USC in a multitude of internal and external stakeholders. And a gracious thank you to Assistant Director Angela Tang for her nearly 10 years of service. Wow, that went by quickly. And of course, a warm welcome to our most recent addition, Associate Director Carol Shimazaki. So we're very proud of them and thank them again. Now I will say the spectacular work of Grace and her team could only be so because of the partnership and commitment of the APAA's Board of Directors and the broader volunteer community, which gives so selflessly of its time, talent, and treasure each and every year. A special shout out and thank you to APAA Board President, so another round of applause for ADA. <laughs> for her marvelous leadership, and to APAA Gala Co-Chair Tim Wong and Vice Chair Felita Wong Shen for their efforts to bring us to this point tonight. What a beautiful room full of a lot of Trojan energy and spirit. To our APA scholars who you're gonna meet in a couple moments, you are the bright future for so many, both in the API community and our Trojan family, and we congratulate you on all of your current successes. And to our honorees, Husoto, Gay, Pranav, and Shan. Congratulations on your richly deserved awards tonight. We can't wait to see what the evening has in store for you. You make us all proud. Congratulations. <laughs> and if these remarks haven't gone on long enough, <laughs> finally, I wanted to give a very warm welcome back to the Trojan who marked an important beginning of a long overdue era for USC, our Trojan family, and specifically our alumni leadership community. Our MC, Dr. Mitchell Liu, served as the first ever Asian Pacific American president of the USC Alumni Association Board of Governors just over a decade ago, shortly after serving as APA president. Following his Board of Governors presidency, Dr. Liu went on to become USC's first ever Asian Pacific American trustee, serving until 2018. Mitchell, we are grateful for having you lead us tonight. You know, as, as they say, the doctor saved us yet again. And to have you and your fabulous Trojan wife, Dina, produce two more awesome Trojans, Amanda 
and aptly named Troy. <laughs> it is an, it's true, they really did that. That's how much they love the university. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda's name isn't Helen, but I think Amanda is a great name for her. <laughs> it is an honor for us to have you here tonight, Mitchell, so thank you again. Come back to the stage and lead us, and to everybody here, fight on. Patrick, that was, uh, thank you for the kind words. And anything I've said to you in the last 10 years, that was mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, pa Patrick's been our leader for 10 years and he has taken the Alumni Association to great heights, one of the top alumni associations in higher education, hands down. You can clap for that, yes. The first APA scholarships were awarded in 1985 to seven USC undergraduates. Since then, more than $2.2 million has been awarded, and our endowment has grown to more than $2.7 million. The scholarship program is currently comprised of 50 individually named awards, including five fully endowed individual scholarship funds. These awards recognize the lead donors who are building a foundation of financial support for deserving USC student, students in perpetuity. Now selecting APA scholarship recipients is no easy task. The responsibility of evaluating each candidate falls upon a devoted group of alumni volunteers who spend countless hours reviewing every application and interviewing final candidates. And now, please welcome the chair of the APAA Scholarship Committee, Martin Wynn. Thank you, Mitchell. Good evening, guests, donors, fellow board members. We have an extraordinary group of students and I'm excited to present our scholars to you. I know may, I may look like a scholar myself, but looks can be deceiving. <laughs> All kidding aside, I am very proud to serve as the chair of our scholarship committee. I want to thank my fellow committee members the time you've given has made a real and meaningful impact to the lives of our scholars. Our APAA family takes great pride and pleasure in meeting some of USC's finest students during our annual selection process, which, as my fellow scholarship committee members can attest, is one of the most rewarding experiences for alumni. This year, thanks to our many donors, and with the aid of university matching funds, APAA was able to distribute $225,000 to 79 amazing undergraduate and graduate students. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> However, there seems to be a perception, both inside and outside of our community, that API students simply do not need assistance. That is simply untrue. In the 2021 to 2022 academic year, out of approximately 5,300 students enrolled undergraduates identified as Asian American or Pacific Islander, over 1,500 received either Pell or Cal grants. That's three students out of 10. Three out of 10. However, that incorrect perception is unfortunately reflected in giving trends. I want to challenge everyone in this room tonight to help change that perception. The stories of our APA scholars are tr truly, truly captivating, and it is our mission to provide the resources to enable more of them to unlock their truest potential. We'd like to show you some of that potential right now. Wow, this is nice. That was my initial impression when I stepped onto USC. Seeing how culture is so widely celebrated here, I just love it. I felt like I had a sense of belonging, even though I was in a very new environment. My family comes from Guam. My grandfather was a Marine, my father was a Marine, all their brothers were Marines. Now two of my brothers are Marines, and same with me. I was interested in medicine. 
and it just was really something that I found solace in. I was born and raised in Minnesota and I remember I was embarrassed to open my lunchbox because they would always make comments that it smelled bad or something and those were the types of comments that I experienced a lot. I wanted to be in like a big city um, and go to like a school with a lot of like good resources and, and that just felt like USC. <laughs> It was definitely a big change coming to USC and being around so many more diverse people from all over the world. Being a veteran helps you because you get a lot of responsibility at a young age. I started my initial training in Quantico, Virginia, and then I went to Missouri, and then I got stationed in Camp Pendleton, California. I was in Kuwait and Iraq. Coming here, I knew how great the film school was, and the minor I chose was cinema, television for the health profession, because it was really at the intersection of medicine, health policy, and film. And I thought it would be a great way to understand how to kind of talk about these important health messages to the general public. You can take coursework in psychology and neuroscience and biology, linguistics, philosophy, like it's so diverse. I ended up applying for a cognitive science adding the health and human sciences major, which explores the social connection of medicine. Masters of Business for Veterans came about about 10 years ago to help take the leadership skills they learned in the military and then bring that over to the civilian sector. It's a true honor to be part of that program. It's really changed my perspective. I joined APAA just because I think it's kind of nice to have that uh, shared community on campus where everyone comes from a similar culture and a similar background. I joined APASA as an intern in my freshman year and I was one of two South Asians in the entire org and it was something that I knew I wanted to change. I applied to be the diversity liaison on eBoard. We got a lot more applications from South Asians and Southeast Asian students. And I think in part was because there are people that look like me in this space so I can also join. I really liked doing a lot of community service so I was part of this club called Science Outreach and we go to the local second and third grade classrooms around campus to get them exposed early kind of show them like how fun and wonderful science can be. I wanted to join the Helenes ever since I was a freshman. We volunteer at the 32nd school and tutor students there. I was also part of a club called Community Health Connection and we put on free health fairs for the local community. I did cancer research on campus as well. The network at USC and the social capital amongst people that go to USC, it's just amazing. The support's immense. My first football game was the homecoming game. USC football games are more theatrical, for sure. And there was just something to be said about walking into the Coliseum and being that student section and just feeling the immense energy. Um, I had never experienced something like that. I finally felt really connected to USC culture, especially with the spirit aspect. So the GI Bill covers up to a certain amount, and then you have to find a way to fill the, the rest. And the only category I fit in was uh, the APAA scholarship. I've had to travel to conferences all over the country, and you know the cost of travel isn't necessarily cheap. And these are just all things that APAA tremendously helps out with. There's so many other benefits other than just the monetary aspect of APAA. Like, you get the networking aspect, you get the family, you get the community. What I'm hoping to do is get into the energy sector, the transition from fossil fuels to sustainable and green energy, doing stuff that you felt purposeful. I want to pursue a PhD in clinical psychology, specifically immigrant households and children of immigrants because that resonates with me a lot from my own experiences growing up. My ultimate career goal is to become like an academic head and neck surgeon. I can slowly build up to be that physician, to be that leader in the operating room, to be that leader in healthcare that I've always wanted to be. I know in the future I definitely want to be a part of APAA and hopefully mentor other scholars and just continue this legacy for the future generations. APAA donors, thank you very much for your support. I'm so grateful for all the experiences that I've had through APAA, all the mentorship opportunities and all the networking opportunities. I really look forward to seeing how APAA influences my final year as a medical student and to see where their organization continues to grow and reach newer heights. Right on. The scholars highlighted in the video represent an extraordinary group of students who are doing amazing things at USC, and they will continue to achieve impressive accomplishments.
your generous donations have provided and will continue to provide significant support to their journeys. But rather than just listening to me say that, let's hear it directly from our guests of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm incredibly proud to present our APAA scholars for the 2022-2023 academic year. To express the shared appreciation of this year's APA scholars, please welcome a previous recipient of the Mohammed Abbas Momin Scholarship, Nilish Bagrodia. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to be here with you all this evening on behalf of my fellow APAA scholars. My journey at USC began in the fall of 2016 as a freshman in Bernkrant Hall, a time when the village was in its final year of construction and Cafe 84 and Ground Zero Cafe were bustling. And the past seven years have been nothing short of a dream. I have made lifelong friends, taken several mental photos biking down Truesdale, and lost my voice in the Coliseum more times than I can count. What made my time at USC so exciting was the brilliant people I have met and continue to admire. And APAA has provided me with the close sense of community. When I was a first year medical student, I first met Matthew Lin through the APAA Gold family. And he has now become one of my close friends and a collaborator on research projects. Together, we are currently working to highlight health disparities among Asian and Hispanic populations in Los Angeles regarding head and neck cancer. We will have the chance to share this important work at the American Head and Neck Society 11th International Conference in Montreal, Canada. This phenomenal opportunity came because of the community at APAA, and I am forever grateful. I would like to take a moment to recognize the role of scholarships during my time at USC. What enriched my USC journey was the variety of experiences I had, where I was able to apply my classroom learning in the real world. Through the Engineers Without Borders Club, I worked on a project to plan a large-scale water filtration system at a community center in Antigua, Guatemala. Using this water, community members would be able to work on center improvements and receive sustainable housing after volunteering for a certain number of hours. Through donations received by our club, I had the opportunity to travel to Antigua, Guatemala and evaluate the functioning of our system. We tested water samples and validated our design. It was such a rewarding opportunity to see the impact of our work on people's lives. In the summer of 2018, I had the opportunity to travel to Beijing, China, where I conducted research on microfluidics at the world-renowned Tsinghua University in their electrical engineering department for six weeks. By the end of the trip, I truly felt like a local. I visited everything from the Great Wall of China and Temple of Heaven to the Forbidden City and Summer Palace. This valuable life experience was possible due to donors who funded the entire program. So when you make a donation, I can guarantee you two things. The first is that you're making a significant difference in the life of a scholarship recipient. For me, scholarships have reinforced my confidence in myself. And second, your donation is truly having both a local and global impact as USC trains its students to be active citizens of the 21st century. Looking to the future, after completing the nine hour step two of the United States medical licensing exam yesterday. <laughs> you. 
I am excited to be applying to a residency program to begin my training in cardiothoracic surgery. Down the road, I am passionate about combining my engineering and medical knowledge to advance both fields. It would be a dream to run clinical trials to bring new technology innovated at Viterbi to the bedside at Keck Hospital. Developments in modern medicine have been nothing short of miraculous, and I would like to contribute to furthering medical technology. Thank you all for having me tonight, and it is a privilege to be a part of this talented group of APAA scholars. Fight on. Please welcome back to the stage, Mitchell Liu. Congratulations to you, Nilesh, or it should be Dr. Dr. Bagrodia, and all the APA re recipients, uh, scholarship recipients. You're all so impressive and deserving and destined to become the leaders, entrepreneurs, doctors, scientists, teachers, and artists of tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna break for dinner, but before we do, I just wanna take my MC hat off and address you as a supporter of APAA and get to the heart of why we have this event. While scholarship support for API students has improved, it's not where it needs to be. Four scholarships 40 years ago, or seven scholarships 40 years ago, and 79 scholarships today, $200,000, that's great progress, but we need to keep the needle moving. And it starts here with us. We need the financial support of this community, this community of friends, family, Trojans, and Asian Americans. A scholarship gift of any amount is significant. And so, we've made it easy for you to give tonight. Look in the inside cover of tonight's program book. You'll find instructions for giving with your cell phones. So now you can bring your cell phones out. Text APAA to 41444, and 100% of what you give will go towards student scholarships. Our goal is to raise $30,000, so please join us in this effort. Now you can enjoy your dinner. As a reminder, silent auction still open for 50 more minutes, and the program will resume in about an hour. So bon appetit.
How was dinner? Good, good. The more important question is, have you texted APAA to 41444 on your phone yet? Good, good. Well, I, I want to just give full disclosure. I am monitoring this situation, and I know who's on that list. Did I see your name? And I already spoke to the valet guys. If you, if you don't want to wait more than 30 minutes for your car, you better get on your phone. I'm serious. <laughs> Anyways, we have a very special guest this evening, the reigning Miss California, Catherine Liang. Catherine is a USC alum who graduated in 2021 with a BA in International Relations, Global Business, and a minor in Piano Performance. You're in for a treat because she's going to play for us tonight. Please welcome Catherine Liang. Well, hello, everyone. I am so honored to be here tonight. Um, as our lovely MC mentioned, my name is Catherine, and I am proud to be Miss California. But more, pr <laughs> thank you. But more proud to be a former APAA scholar. <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to share, it's been such an incredible journey since 2018, and I must confess at that time, I was probably not mature enough to realize the value of the scholarship that I had just earned. Um, you know, it's not just supporting my education dreams of funding my tuition for USC, but also exposing me to an incredible network of alumni who really just want to be mentors and um, as I've discovered um, with many of our APA board members, my unofficial aunts and uncles um, that have supported me throughout my year as Miss California and into my career. Um, but I'm very grateful to be here tonight and in the spirit of the Asian Pacific community, I will be playing two pieces. One is by a Chinese composer and it's called Ye. It's called Silver Clouds Chasing the Moon. And then I also have the honor, if you will, indulge me for 90 seconds, uh, be performing my talent that I actually performed at Miss America this past December. So I hope you will enjoy. Um, I will say, I know he mentioned I was a minor in music, but I'm a little rusty, so please be a little forgiving. I just came back from Europe, so I haven't really been practicing, but thank you guys so much. <laughs>
Well, that was sensational. Let's hear it again for Miss California, Catherine Liang. Tonight, we begin our presentations with a Young Alumni Award. To present this award, please welcome the chair of APAA's Young Alumni Council, Amy Chow. Good evening, everyone. It's so great to see you all here. Tonight, I have the honor of presenting the Young Alumni Award to a highly regarded young leader in our community, Sean Mira. A writer, <laughs> a writer, producer, and cultural worker in Los Angeles, Sean is the producer and lead curator of Tuesday Night Cafe in Little Tokyo, the longest running Asian American public art series. He's also the supervising producer of About to Eat, a multi-platform food and travel channel with over a million YouTube subscribers. His writing, which focuses on Asian American cultural work, has appeared in outlets and journals such as the Harvard Asian American Policy Review and Asian Diasporic Visual Cultures in the Americas. Sean has also provided cultural consultation on projects for A24, Netflix, and Disney. Sean has volunteered for various organizations, including the Japanese American National Museum, Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, Nikkei Progressives, Little Tokyo Service Center, and Collaboration, just to name a few. And he's currently a media consultant and core exhibit advisory committee member for the forthcoming permanent exhibit at the Japanese American National Museum. Sean was a graduate of the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. While he was a student, he was an active community leader on campus. Upon graduating, he received the highly esteemed Order of Troy Award, an award given to Trojans selected for their extraordinary service to the university. I'm sure you all agree that Sean's accomplishments are impressive and that there will be much more to come. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating the recipient of this year's Young Alumni Award, Mr. Sean Mira. Hi. <laughs> I can't believe I have to follow Miss California. Um, uh, first and foremost, um, it is an honor to be considered young. Um, <laughs> just got in under the wire. Um, it's an honor to be considered at all, frankly, um, as I haven't been the best Trojan. On getting the call about this award from Grace, I realized that I no longer have any USC clothing. I have, I'm not entirely sure where my diploma is, and please spare me, I haven't been to a football game since 2007. Um, it's really... <laughs> Starting off strong. <laughs> um, in many ways, I would actually call myself a very bad Trojan, but the magic of organizations like the APAA is that they don't force an expectation of what it means to be a USC graduate. Instead, organizations like the APAA challenge us to expand what being a Trojan can be, and therefore challenge us to expand on who we want to be in this world. So I'm humbled and a little embarrassed to address this room full of alumni, esteemed alumni, who represents so many perspectives and industries and that diversity offers a possibility of change. Not just network, net worth change, that's great too, but actual real local and global change that happens when we find common goals, share resources, and create something better. My generation is looking for these solutions because we face an uncertain future. Tomorrow has never been promised to us. We're not gonna solve the climate crisis tomorrow. We won't eradicate systemic racism this year. But one important lesson I learned at USC and through my work in all of our Asian American communities is that we always thrive when we imagine the world we want to live in and then fight for its realization, no matter how far forward we make it in our lifetime. So, thank you. 
So, I accept this award knowing that it comes with a challenge to keep in that work. And to meet that challenge, it will take the power of all kinds of Trojans, some more around than others. There's a good chance that I may not see you at a tailgate, but please invite me. I love a good cookout. But I really hope to meet you tonight. Aside from the uh, title of this award, the Young Alumni Award, I am old enough to know how much work it's going to take for us to get to that world if you want to imagine and create something better. But I'm also young enough to know that I can't do it alone, and none of us can do that alone, just ourselves. So with that, a deep, deep thank you to the Asian Pacific Alumni Association for this humbling recognition and challenge. Thank you to all the professors and grad student workers who pushed me to become who I am over my time at USC. Thank you to the student affairs workers, especially at APAS, who are my reason for being proud of USC. Heads up. All my circle alum in the house, are you here? No? Okay. Um, and of course, thank you to my mom, my late father, and my partner Andrew, who have always been my most important journey. And I do want to give a quick shout out to my grandmother, Hidako Banai, who graduated from USC as with a PhD, um, well after raising three children. Um, this is for her. So thank you. Yeah. Congratulations to Sean. I, I knew Sean 10 years ago when he was a student, and he was a student leader with APASA, and he's continuing the great work, so we're also very proud of him. The recipients of the APAA Service Award are some of the Trojan family's most precious assets. They have donated their time, volunteered their talents, and contributed their treasure in support of the university and fellow alumni. To present tonight's APAA Service Award, please welcome a member of the Board of Directors, Sky Kagachi. Thank you, Mitchell. So seven years ago, I met Pranav Shah, serving on the APA Board of Directors, and I immediately knew we would become fast friends. When he offered me leftover, unopened, high-end liquor from an event that he produced. <laughs> Whew. And look at us now. Tonight, I have the honor of presenting the service award to my enabler, I mean, my good friend, Pranav Shah. He is the founder and president of Off the Grid Management and D34 Rentals. Since starting his own business, he has worked with such brands as Anheuser-Busch, Michelob Ultra, Meta, T-Mobile, and the LA Opera. Pranav graduated from the USC School of Dramatic Arts with a BFA in Technical Direction. At USC, he served on the Southern California Indo-American Student Group Board and was a member of the Asian Pacific American Student Assembly. Before he graduated, he worked with the Asian Pacific American Support Group to create the Mohammed Abbas Momin Memorial Scholarship. Then, after moving to the East Coast, Pranav was involved with the USC Alumni Club of New York, serving as the group's president from 2012 to 2013, and received the 2013 USC Alumni Association Whitney Alumni House Volunteer Award. He served on the committee that oversaw eight annual Tommy Award shows, honoring USC alumni in New York. Returning to Los Angeles in 2015, Pranav served on the USC APA board from 2017 to 2022, where he provided me with much liquor. <laughs> Thank you, Pranav. He chaired and co-chaired the USC Asian Pacific Film Fest for four years and served on multiple years on the APAA Scholarship Review Committee. He's currently on the Alumni Leadership Council for the USC School of Dramatic Arts and regularly meets with SDA production students to discuss career paths and work in the industry. And if that isn't enough to convince you of Pranav's dedication to USC, I've witnessed it firsthand when he brought an entire production studio, including monitors, keyboards, computers, microphones, a mixing board, and lighting to my home 
to do a live broadcast of the COVID-restricted 2021 USC Asian Pacific Film Fest. And then he literally ran around the 2023 Film Fest as if he didn't break his rib the day before, never complained once, and didn't tell anybody about it except for me, because I'm special. <laughs> but, but tonight is not about me, so I am very excited to recognize Pranav Shah with the well-deserved APA Service Award. <laughs> Pranav, come up here and accept your award. Thank you for that intro, Sky. Um, and I am always here to enable my friends. Thank you for uh, <laughs> mentioning that. Um, first, thank you to the APAA for this wonderful award and the School of Dramatic Arts for nominating me. Um, I'm usually backstage or producing these events uh, rather than on stage giving these speech, so you'll have to bear with me through this awkwardness <laughs> that I'll be in for a bit. Um, I've always felt like I was one of those guys who was just, quote, always around, uh, because I enjoy the events and the company that the school brings. Uh, while in New York, serving on the regional board was my way to stay an active part of the Strogen family that we all love, and personally, it was an easy way for me to make friends in a place that I initially didn't know a lot of people in. Uh, and of course, over time, I ended up going all in and became very involved in activities, on the board, making the Tommy Awards, and jumping right back into USC, LA alumni life when I moved back to LA. Uh, Grace Sheba was one of those people that got me involved right when I moved back, and it's been such a privilege to be part of this APA community. Um, as a note, Scott Sternberg was also one of those people who many of us knew um, and were friends and acquaintances of, um, and it saddened me that uh, he was taken from us so unexpectedly while he was so young. Um, I have several friends here uh, sitting at my table and around the room tonight, uh, but specifically, thank you guys, uh, I'd like, but specifically I'd like to thank my parents and my brother for traveling here from Kansas. Um, the, the main reason we're here uh, gathering tonight is to raise money for scholarships and support dozens of students every year by taking some financial burden off of them and their families. My journey to USC couldn't have been without the love and support of my parents. Uh, it is clearly the dream of any Indian immigrant parents to hear from their kid that they want to go to college as far away as possible <laughs> to a ridiculously expensive university to attend theater school. <laughs> but in reality, I'm also largely here today because of the substantial financial aid package USC offered me at the time and the scholarships that I received. Uh, for those of us now in a position to give and support these amazing students, whether in time, talent, or treasure, I do encourage you to donate how you can. I've met sev several of our scholars over the years, and they are the best of the best representing this API community and will continue to do so throughout their lives. Um, I am so humbled and honored for being here today. Uh, basically for being a guy that wants to hang out with his friends and do USC-related stuff with them. So um, I hope to continue to be able to do that for many years to come. Thank you again, and fight on. Very impressive, Pranav. Pra and your parents are here from Kansas? Where are they? Good job with your son. The APA Leadership Award recognizes the outstanding personal merits and achievements of Asian Pacific Trojans. Our honorees proudly represent USC and the Trojan family as leaders in their industries and communities. To present tonight's first Leadership Award, please welcome back Grace Sheba.
Thank you, Mitchell. Tonight, I have the honor of presenting a leadership award to one of Asia's most influential business leaders, Husodo Anko Subruto. Husodo is chairman of PT Gunman Suwe Kintana, otherwise known as GSK, an Indonesian-based investment and management group with three core businesses, agriculture, including agribusiness, excuse me, uh, including the largest canned pineapple operation in the world, property development, and financial services. Husodo has played a pivotal role in developing GSK into a leading edge company that holds other investment portfolios ranging from manufacturing to private equity. Under his leadership, G GSK has worked to reduce the use of chemicals and has produced small scale farmers with opportunities to own sustainable, scalable, and more profitable businesses. Husodo has been instrumental in the creation and success of the Marshall International Summer Internship, otherwise known as MISIP program. The program was founded in 2011 and has seen almost 200 undergraduate students intern in Jakarta and in Bangkok with companies such as Lippo Group, KPMG, Subutra, and Forbes Asia, to name a few. In addition, he is instrumental in supporting a new undergraduate global honors class, which uh, asks students to use daily analytics to address problems of sustainability. He has also supported the USC Asia Pacific Business Forum in Bali and works closely with Dick Drobnik of IBEAR. As a dedicated Trojan, Husoto has devoted a great deal of his time and energy to developing strong bonds among USC alumni. He served as the president of the USC Alumni Club in Indonesia for over seven years, and with other Trojans, he has worked to raise money to fund the building of libraries and to promote literacy through the purchase of bookmobiles. Isn't that amazing? A recent article in the Globe magazine wrote, the alumni of USC in Indonesia include some of the most powerful and influential uh, members of the country's business community. Having achieved success, they are now giving back to society and in the process, hope to create a better country. To be honest, I'm not quite so sure how Kusoto does it all. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this gentleman actually flew in from Jakarta to be here with us today. So it is my great pleasure to present the APAA Leadership Award to my good friend, Kusoto Angosubruto. Thank you, Grace. Thank you very much. Thank you for this organization, fantastic organization, USC Asian Pacific Alumni Association, for awarding me this leadership award. I'm truly honored. You know, they say the old days were the good days. Arriving in sunny California as an 18-year-old surely couldn't be bad especially Southern California. And going to its university, the University of Southern California would enhance life goodness. I spent three amazing years at USC. I learned so much during those years. I learned how to sail in Marina del Rey. I signed up for golf classes. <laughs> okay, okay. I even took up something more serious, fencing. <laughs> it was super fun. Better still, those classes were free. In those days at USC, Students only needed to pay up to 
15 units a semester. Anything extra was on the house. <laughs> also, I managed to sneak into uh, cinema school classes. I watch movies for free. <laughs> you know, after all, we are in Hollywood. <laughs> those, ghost, those old days are the good days. Agree, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but on a serious note, the three years at USC really shaped me. If asked, what was one thing that life-changing for me? I would say without hesitation, attending USC. Coming from Indonesia, a poor country in 1975, its economy was closed. USC completely blew my mind. Studying here gave me a different life perspective which I could never have imagined. The classes showed me there were always better ways to do things. The experience widened my horizon. This experience opened my mind to many, many possibilities. Shout out to many professors who imparted their knowledge to me. I can still vividly recall their lessons. I thank them for assigning me to write 50 page paper <laughs> on a typewriter <laughs> on Ray Kroc and McDonald's <laughs> in business strategy class. And another long paper on Miller Brewing Company in marketing class. A lot of research using microfilm. Those days, you know, no computer. I thank them for putting a group of us into a recorded lab, showing us leadership function. I thank them for making me to see the time value of money in finance class. They taught me business communication, accounting, business law, marketing, and many, many more. I later put these lessons to good use in my business. But one important thing, before graduation, a professor told us that our learning journey was just the beginning. The school only equipped us with the skill to learn. The real learning journey starts when we graduate. To this day, I always remember this valuable advice. I returned to Indonesia in 1978, equipped with a Bachelor of Science degree I was fortunate the country was booming. I eagerly applied what I learned from USC, from my USC professors, which at that time was a new knowledge for Indonesia. I used my business school creden cred credentials and of course my English to secure a bank loan from an, Ameri for, from an American bank. That loan helped start our pineapple business and construct also a headquarter building for a different American bank. I must thank my parents, especially my mother, who insisted that the kids must attain higher education. Equally, I must thank USC, who not only educated me, but also my other seven 
family members. And my, my sisters uh, and my nieces, they are here now. Uh, both of them are from USC. And with that, i like to thank again uh, the executive director, Grace Shiba, for organizing this. I thank you very much, and fight on. Thank you, Husoto. That was a very inspiring story. Times have changed at USC. I don't think anything's free anymore, though. <laughs> I actually had the privilege of meeting Husoto 10 years ago in Jakarta. Uh, we were part of an alumni association uh, group, and everyone in Indonesia knows Husoto. He's a very well-respected man there. A lot of traffic, but he's respected. <laughs> To present our next leadership award, please welcome a member of APA's Board of Directors, Oliver Seacat. Tonight, I have the honor of presenting the leadership award to a nationally recognized leader in the Chinese American community. Gay Yen, a leader in the education for more than four decades, has influenced teachers, administrators, lawmakers, national and international governments in the design of policy and curriculum and instruction for the fields of bilingual and minority education. Throughout her professional life, she has had a singular focus, educational equity and inclusion through the promotion of bilingual education. At Cal State LA, she was a chair of the Division of Curriculum and Instruction where she oversaw the teaching credentialing programs for elementary, secondary, and graduate education. Prior to her work in higher education and educational policy, Gay was a teacher and a coordinator for the Los Angeles Unified School District and an administrator for the Alhambra Unified School District. Her work focused on training the language of teachers with specific programs for English as a second language and bilingual immersion programs for all languages. She helped promote cross-cultural understanding and educational equity for all students of color. She established California standards for the certification of bilingual teachers in all languages and established ESL standards for immigrant students in the public schools. Her work in education has left a lasting impact in California, the United States, and globally and she has helped lead the inclusion of minority and immigrant education as a part of inclusive practices for national governments. Gay is currently chairperson of the Friends of the Chinese American Museum in Los Angeles Board of Directors, and in this position she is leading a $4 million expansion in the historic El Pueblo to raise awareness of the history and contributions of Chinese in America. She was recently named Commissioner, Commissioner of Human Rights for Los Angeles County. He was also presented with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Chinese American Elected Officials Organization. She has served as, the board of mem as a board member and fundraiser for numerous local nonprofits, and she's received numerous awards in her work in education, women's rights, and social justice. Gay received her PhD from the USC Rossier School of Education, and she also holds degrees from Cal State, UCLA, uh, Cal State LA and UCLA. And although this leadership award is an acknowledgement of what Gay has accomplished to date, we are inspired knowing that she will still continue to actively pursue social justice, equity, and inclusion. It is my honor to present a USC APA leadership award to Gay Yen. Gay, please come forward to accept your award.
Thank you so much. This is so inspiring um, because I was a latecomer to the Trojan family. I came to study for my PhD after I was married, I was teaching, I had a house mortgage, I had children, and so it was quite a challenge to come to join the USC family, but I'm so glad I did. And as a teacher, Mr. Teleprompter, I'm gonna go off script a little bit, okay? <laughs> As a teacher, I want to especially congratulate the scholarship recipients this year. The Chinese have a saying, and that is, when you drink water, don't forget those who dug the wells. And that's my message now to the scholarship recipients. Look around, you're part of the Trojan family now. But don't forget the people in this audience and others who have dug those wells. I want to also congratulate my fellow recipients for their leadership, for their services, and for their determination to make this a better world for us. When I first immigrated to the United States at the age of six, I struggled, similar struggles of the children who were uprooted from the places they called home to be deposited to new and unfamiliar places where they're unfamiliar with the languages, they're unfamiliar with the customs, and they're just scared because they're just in a strange place often unwilling or unknowing immigrants, these children's parents made sacrifices so that their children would have better opportunities and better futures. This continues to happen today as we grieve over what's happening in our southern borders. My parents' sacrifices resulted in my standing before you today, a proud Trojan a proud PhD graduate of USC. But my Trojan journey began when dreams that were not mine alone. Those were the dreams of my parents and my grandparents, peasants from the Guangdong province in China. These dreams are immigrant dreams. The opportunity to go to school, the first to graduate from high school, the first to go to college, the first to have a professional career. I'm one of the fortunate ones because my parents' dreams brought me here today. I drank from the wells that they dug. There's also a Chinese saying that says, when someone is your teacher for one day, that is your teacher for life, and you should respect and honor them as a parent. I'd like to take this opportunity tonight to recognize and honor my teacher for life. Dr. Reynaldo Macias, he's one of the most respected scholars in the area of bilingual education and bilingual policy in the United States. I remember in 1985, I challenged him. I said, why are you writing federal grants for PhD programs for Spanish only? Why aren't you writing for Chinese when there's so many Chinese immigrants around and also the refugees coming from Vietnam? And being the kind gentleman that he is, he said to me, if I get grants for Chinese language programs, will you enroll? He did, I did, and I stand before you today. Thank you, Dr. Reynaldo Macias, my professor, my chairman, my mentor. Thank you, thank you. And also my friend is Caroline Webb de Macias, who was 
a vice president of external affairs for USC, and she also served as my mentor in many areas. So thank you so much, Caroline. In the audience tonight are also my children and their family members. And my children had to sacrifice a lot because when I'm doing my doctor's program here at SC, I was not the mother that was always around to celebrate their milestones with them. And they are here still supporting me and I am so blessed with my children. In the audience are also many, many dear friends and board members of the Chinese American Museum. And also, I call them my community rabble-rousers because how do we do it? We're in our 70s now, and we're still protesting, we're still talking about social justice, and we're still going to places where we feel we need to go to because it's the right thing to do. So fight on, indeed. Indeed, fight on. Thank you all for supporting me for what I do. Thank you for your faith in me. And thank you for the USC Asian Pacific Alumni Association for this treasured award. And like Sean, I have not been a good Trojan, but I promise I will be from this point on. Thank you so much. Honored guests, please welcome to the stage the president of the APAA Board of Directors, Ada Ye. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful celebration tonight. Congratulations again to all of our honorees. And I wanted to have another round of applause for everybody. Can we do that right now? <laughs> One of our goals for the APA is to elevate our API community by sharing our stories. We are delighted that we can use this event to highlight your journeys and to show that we are truly proud to have you represent the Trojan family. Also, a heartfelt thanks to all of you that are here this evening. We're grateful for your support and your generous contributions. So we were looking at the text to give that we had um, put up earlier this evening. As you can see, we are very close to our goal. We have, um, I don't know if the number matches mine, $26,158 raised of our $30,000 goal. So fantastic, thank you. All of you have made a meaningful impact as we push forward on our mission and we build upon the amazing legacy of the APAA. We'd like to thank our amazing APAA staff once again, Grace Shiba, Carol Shimazaki, and Angela Tang. You are at the core of APAA and there's no way we can get our events and our programs done without all of you. So we really appreciate you on all the time that you put in and the tireless hours that you are in the office each and every week, so thank you. We are also uh, very grateful for our MC, Mitchell Liu. <laughs> We're so grateful that he is doing this with us this evening. I think it feels like home. I think he belongs here. He's a part of the group. I think we're gonna have him involved more often. We're not gonna let him get away. <laughs> but if we could have Mitchell come out, we have a gift for him to say thank you. Next, I would like to thank our gala chair, Tim Wong. Please stand, Tim. I'm gonna have everyone stand up again. I think earlier, some people weren't around because of the parking and getting on, so I wanna make sure that we recognize everyone. So Tim, 
Please stay standing. I'm going to have everyone stand. Felita Wong Shen, <laughs> a.k.a. our queen of silent auction. Please stand. Can those that served on the gala committee please stand up? Because we have board members that have since gone to emeriti status, and they've since returned just to serve on our gala committee and continue serving, so I'd like everyone to stand up. Thank you. And for our board of directors, please stand up and join everyone as well. Thank you. As you can see, it was a true labor of love, and it really takes a village. It required a team to make this event possible. So we really want to thank everybody for stepping in and doing their share, because there's no way that we could have done it. A huge thank you to our sponsors and our donors. So actually, if I can have those of you that have sponsored tables and that have been donors, if you don't mind, please stand up as well. So your generosity and support impacts APA more than you can ever imagine. And I think that you can see from the people that are here, for those that are supporting APA and have done so over the years, you've made a significant impact. So everyone, please continue to think of APAA as we continue to build our endowment. As many of you know, it's still a challenge for the API community to get institutional donors and corporate sponsorships. So at this time, our community has to has to count on one another to support each other in this effort. Listening to the stories of our brilliant scholars has been inspiring, and we know the futures of these scholars are very bright. As you can see, what happens with our scholars and our students, they go on to huge opportunities and have done very well. So it's rewarding to know that everything we're doing is helpful, and our goal is that our students are supported financially and professionally. So we look forward to building and growing this community so we can continue to support and impact the generations that follow. All of our events, this gala is certainly a highlight. It has been an honor to take part in it. I love that this event brings Trojans and friends of the API, APA together to celebrate and to fundraise towards a common cause. It has been an absolute blessing and tremendous privilege to have served as the president for APA for the last two years. We've built a great team, and it's been a pleasure to work with this board, our emeriti, my fellow alumni volunteers on the Board of Governors, working with Patrick's team, and Dr. Fult and her leadership team. It's been truly a privilege. So on behalf of the entire Board of Directors, we thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. And now, in what has become a gala tradition, I present to you the Spirit of Troy, the USC Trojan Marching Band. Good night and fight on.
Thank you for attending the USC Asian Pacific Alumni Association Scholarship and Awards Gala. Have a wonderful evening. APAA Board of Directors and Honorees, please come to the stage for a group photo.